Hi, I'm Gary Rubenstein, and today I'd like to help you learn how to solve algebra problems that involve averages. Here I have a warm-up question for you. We have five numbers, 78, 87, 92, 96, and 97. Now I want you to first think about, just to take a guess, what do you think the average of those five numbers is? And then I would like you to calculate the average of those five numbers by adding them up and dividing by five. So uh, take a few minutes to answer those two questions. First try to estimate just for yourself what uh, the average might be and then verify that by adding them up and dividing by five and see how good of a guess did you make. When you finish, click the uh, continue button. So the answer to the question was 90 and there's no wrong answer to what you, you guessed as your approximation but I hope that now that you see that the answer is 90, you get a feel that although none of the five numbers is 90, there are some numbers bigger than 90 and some numbers less than 90, so it should make sense that the answer would be around 90. But it does turn out that the answer is exactly 90. Here's another question that I want you to do the same thing for. I want you to first estimate what you think the average is of these five numbers, and then I'd like you to calculate what the averages of the five numbers and see um, how good of a guess you made. The five numbers in this case are 90, 90, 90, 90, and 90. So please uh, take a few minutes to first estimate the answer and then calculate the answer and push continue when, you've, when you're ready to move on. And just like before, the answer to this question also became 90. When you add up those five 90s, you get 450 divided by 5 is 90. And what we have here is a sort of special situation. When all the numbers are the same, the average of the numbers will just be that number. So here's a practice question for you. What is the average of 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, and 80? Try that one and push continue when you have your answer. And I hope you got that the average of those numbers are 80. Um, you could do it by adding up all the 80s and dividing um, by, divided by 8. Or maybe you'll recognize that if all the numbers are the same, then the average of that number will be the same also. Now from our first two examples, we can see that you can have two different sets of numbers that are, that are different numbers. Um, that have the same average. So your warm-up question had 78, 87, 92, 96, 97. Those five numbers had an average of 90. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90 also had an average of 90. And here's another set of numbers, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, also happens to have a, an average of 90. Here's a question I'd like you to think about. Aside from having an average of 90, what do these five sets of numbers have in common? And everyone, please take a minute to think about that and push continue after you've done so. Well, there are other observations you might have made, but one that I want you to ponder is that these three data sets, not only do they all have an average of 90, but they all have a sum of 450. And notice that 450 is equal to 5 times 90. Now here's an important question I want you to think about. If I, if I tell you I have five numbers and they have an average, the average of those five numbers is 80. One question that I want you to think about is, is there a way for you to figure out what the five numbers add up to, what, the, what their sum is? There's no way to figure out what the five numbers are separately, but we can figure out their sum. Please think about that and hit continue when you're ready to move on. The answer turns out to be uh, 400. And one way to think about that is maybe the five numbers were all 80. So it would be 80, 80, 80, 80, and 80. That would have an average of an 80. And if you add those together, you could do 
5 times 80, or 80, just 80 plus 80 plus 80 plus 80 plus 80, and you would get 400. And with that, we can get a little bit of, of, of a rule. Uh, we know that the formula for calculating average is the total divided by the number of things. Well, it's also true that the total is equal to the number of things times the average. So this little formula here is something you could use to answer this question. If you know how many numbers you have, which is 5, and you know what the average is already, which is 80, you can multiply those numbers together to get the total, which is something they could ask on a test, but we also can use it to do a more complicated question that's coming up soon. The next question I want you to think about doesn't seem to have to do with averages, but it will be important as we uh, build up to more difficult questions. Here's the question. There are five numbers that have a sum of 450. That is, they add up to 450. I'll tell you four of the numbers. Four of the numbers are 78, 87, 92, and 96. And the question for you is to find the fifth number. Take a few minutes to think about that and push the continue button when you feel like you have an answer. And the answer to this question was 97. And I did that by adding up the four numbers, 78, 87, 92, and 96, and getting 353, and then subtracting 353 from 450. This could be phrased as an, as an algebra problem. I could say x, I don't know what that number is yet. I could say x plus 78 plus 87 plus 92 plus 96, they have to add up to 450. I can combine these to 353. And then I would subtract 353 from both sides. Maybe do that on the side to get 97. So this question could be solved. It's a little algebra question, but you wouldn't need to. You could also, it's almost better to understand that to get the fifth number, you would add up the four and subtract from the total. So here I have a very popular question that's on standardized tests all the time. It says, a student gets 78, 87, 92, and 96 on four tests. What must he get on the next test to have a 90 average? Now, I, I will teach you how to apply what we've done already to this question, but why don't you take a few minutes to think about how you might answer that question yourself and you can hit continue when either you've gotten the answer or when you just want to see um, my explanation of this. So the answer does end up being 97, and I'm going to take you through how I would work this question. The first thing that I would do, I'd, I'd observe that if they want to get a 90 average, and there's going to be five tests total, and the average is going to be a 90. That means that the total of all five grades is going to be 5 times 90, which is 450. So if you know the, the number of tests, <coughs> or the number of numbers, and the average, you could always multiply those together to get the, uh, the total. Well, now that I know that the total of the five numbers has to be 450, and I know four out of the five numbers, these numbers should look kind of familiar to you, maybe. And if I add these up, I get 353, just like before. And 450, they need to add up to 450. So to figure out what the fifth number is, I would subtract and get 97, which is the answer to this question. Now, this question could also be done algebraically. It would look like this. What is the missing test? If the other four, eight, when I add it to the other four tests and divide by five, because that's how you take the average, would I get 90? This algebra way works also. I don't. I think it's uh, better to do it this way I, without the algebra, but it's okay to do it with the algebra. This is what it would look like. We could simplify this 
by adding together these four things. It's 90. Now the next step, if you're doing a, if if you're doing the this, this algebra way, the next step would be to multiply both sides of this equation by five, and then you would these fives would cancel out, and you would get x plus 353 equals 450. And after you subtract 353 from both sides, you would end up with x equals 97, just like we got before. So this one, if, if a teacher, let's say, wants to see, they say only an algebraic solution is accepted, uh, this would be sort of the, the algebra way of doing that question. This way on the left didn't officially use algebra, but it used a lot of the ideas from it. And that's the main question I wanted to show you today. So I'm going to give you uh, a practice question that you can do on your own to see if, if you've mastered the concept. So here's the big question I'd like you to try to solve on your own. If a student has test scores of 82, 85, 87, 90, and 92, what must she get on the sixth test to get an 86 average? for the six tests. So I want you to, it's, uh, it's going to pause for you, I want you to take a few minutes to try to answer this question yourself before hitting the continue button. And the answer, which I hope you got, turned out to be 80. The way I got that answer is I figured if I need to get an 86 average and there's six tests, I would do 86, uh, 86 times 6 to figure out that the total needs to be 516. But these numbers so far only added up to 436. In order to get a total of 516, I had to subtract. 516 minus 436 to get the answer of 80. If your teacher insists that you do this the algebraic way, you would do this over 6 equals 86. You would simplify these numbers to become 436 over 6 equals 86. You would multiply both sides by 6 to get 516. And finally you would subtract 436 from both sides to get the answer that way. Well, that concludes the lesson of how to uh, solve algebra problems uh, involving averages. I hope you learned a lot from that, and uh, have a good rest of your day.